Owen, 22 August 2019. My name is John Eigenbrode. I am the chair of the board. Would the board members please go around and state their name for the record. Jeannie Lucas. Brandy Deese will be serving as staff for the board tonight. Uh, we consider the minutes from the last meeting of the board. Are there any questions or corrections? No. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes as submitted? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. I'll second that motion. All in favor? All right, the minutes are accepted. These are quasi-judicial evidentiary hearings. That means it is like a court hearing. State law, general statute, 160A-388 sets specific procedures and rules concerning how this board must make its decision. These rules are different from other types of land use decisions like the rezoning cases. The board's discretion is limited. The board must base its decision upon com competent, relevant, and substantial evidence in the record. A quasi-judicial decision is not a popularity contest. It is a decision constrained by the standards of the ordinance and based on the facts presented. If you will be speaking as a witness, please focus on the facts and standards, not personal preference or opinion. Participation is limited. This meeting is open to the public. Everyone is welcome to watch. Parties withstanding have rights to participate fully. Parties may present evidence, call witnesses, and make legal arguments. Parties are limited to the applicant, the local government, and individuals who can show they will suffer special damages. Other individuals may serve as witnesses when called by the board. General witness testimony is limited to facts, not opinions. For certain topics, the board needs to hear opinion testimony from expert witnesses. The topics include projections about impacts on property values and projections about increased traffic. Individuals providing expert opinion must be qualified experts and provide the factual evidence upon which they base their expert opinions. And we need to add a member to the roll. Yes, can you just state your name for the record? State your name. Yeah, Kat Miller. Thank you. Sorry. We will now open the evidentiary hearing for SUP 2019-0083, Ice Valley Commons. The applicant has, re has requested a special use permit. The property is located in Sun Valley Commons. For a variance, four-fifths vote of the board is required. This, this decision will only require a simple majority. Witnesses, witnesses must swear or affirm their testimony. At this time, we will administer the oath for all individuals who intend to provide witness testimony. Place your... Place your right hand on the Bible, raise your left hand. Affirm. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the evidence you shall give to the board? In this action shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing, tr nothing but the truth, so help you God. Thank you. Please be seated. The parties to this case are entitled to an impartial board. A member may na not participate in this hearing. If she or he has a fixed opinion about the matter, a financial interest in the outcome of the matter, or a close relationship with an affected person, does any board member have any partial partiality to disclose and recuse to, recusal to offer? No. No. It is the policy of this... Never mind, we don't need that. <laughs> The parties to this case have rights for any ex parte communication to be disclosed. Ex parte communication is a communication about the case outside the hearing that may include site visits as well as conversations with parties, staff, 
or the general public. Does any board member have any site visits to disclose? No. 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 I did have a discussion with staff earlier this week about what lies behind this as far as ordinances go. Okay. Does anybody else, does any board member have any other conversations or communications as to go? No. Brandy Deese will introduce this hearing before you start, please confirm that you were sworn at the start of the hearing. If not, I would administer the oath now. Yes, sir, I was sworn. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. We are here tonight to consider SUP 2019-0083, Sun Valley Commons Ice Skate and Rink, as mentioned by the chairman previously. The applicant for this request is the Moser Group. The proposed use is a holiday ice skating rink located in Sun Valley Commons on a 0.39 acre parcel zone general business. And the required process for this is actually a temporary use permit due to the duration, as well as we felt that um, this could be successful enough to draw significant crowds as the reason we've, we've um, brought it before you under the special use permit requirement. Here is the site location in red, the L-shaped parcel that we're considering. Again, zone general business. And staff analyzed this, found that the SUP was required due, the, due to the duration and the crowds that may gather. We also considered that the parcel surrounded by Sun Valley Commons itself. So all the parcels surrounding it are zoned general business and developed commercially. The applicant has applied and will obtain for permit, permits for construction of the temporary ice skating rink through Union County to ensure building codes, fire codes, um, and such are met once this approval has been granted. As far as the comprehensive plan and the consistencies, this request meets several goals. Quality of life, goal number one, provide a unique identity for Indian Trail with common community design and other identity elements implemented throughout the town. Goal number four, parks and recreation, open space and natural environment. Seek partnerships to help facilitate development of local parks and recreational facilities and programs. And lastly, economic development goal number seven, support existing businesses through effective communication and community outreach. Staff is of the opinion that the temporary use for this property for a holiday ice skating rink is in harmony with a comprehensive plan. So as usual, your criteria for approving a special use permit, there's several things that you're gonna consider, whether the application is complete, whether it meets the requirements of the UDO. You need to consider whether it materially endangers the public hate, uh, health or safety, whether it substantially injures the value of adjoining abundant properties, is it in harmony with the area in which it is to be located, and is it in general conformity with the Town of Indian Trails comp plan and other adopted plans? Once you consider that, then you'll have your final action on the item. And I'll be glad to answer any questions you may have. Anybody have any questions? Here's that. Do you have any questions for staff? No. Uh, I don't have a list of who's talking for the applicant. We have Ms. McKenzie Moser representing the Moser Group. Hi. Thanks for your time tonight. And I'm actually here with Mike Mulhall and Mo Mulhall, Maureen Mulhall, um, who are with Extreme Ice Center, who will actually be uh, constructing, managing, and operating the outdoor ice skating rink, and they do this in other locations, for example, like downtown Greenville, South Carolina, and it's been a huge success in those places, and so they've done it year to year and figured out all of the details on how to run it, and it's awesome that they're local, you know, Extreme Ice Center, and that they're willing to do this for our community, so um, they can answer any questions regarding the 
process, the construction, um, the assemblage, management, and the operations. Is there, in the process of doing it, uh, my sort of question would be, is there insurance involved to cover the, having, you know, just somebody falls or whatever, because ice is hard, I know. <laughs> Liability insurance and things in place for that. Yes. Okay. We need a name and address locally. Sure. For the insurance. No. Your for you, your, your name and address. Oh, sure. Oh, sorry. Uh, for the Mike. Record. Yeah. Mike Mulhall. Uh, home address five three three Rain Tree Drive, Indian Trail, North Carolina. Okay. Um, I was just curious. I mean, you're doing actual ice on this one. Yes. Uh, I know that. Uh, was, I asked Brandy about it, but uh, when they had the uh, NFL, not NFL, NHL draft in Pittsburgh. Right. They had a sheet outside that was a synthetic ice right. that was rather uniquely done. Yeah. And uh, it was interesting because my son plays, my grandson plays hockey, and my son is a hockey coach for okay. uh, American soccer, youth soccer. So, great. Okay. Yeah, the synthetic ice, uh, I mean, we, we've played with it a little bit and we've experimented with it, but. There's really nothing like real ice. Yeah. And I think most people, especially over the holiday season, that's kind of what they really look for. So, yes, Any other questions? Yeah, questions. So this is outdoor, correct? Yes, ma'am. And so my question is this security, and I get why you're in operating times, but the Sun Valley area is a hangout there. So when you close at, what are your closing hours, like 11 o'clock or something? Uh, 10 o'clock will probably be the latest. Okay, so since it's outdoors, right. what's to stop anybody? I mean, yeah, they, please yeah. like address that, because I think that's a huge safety concern in that area, just because I've heard I live in, in, it's just a huge concern in that area for what's gonna happen once you close and your staff goes home, because it, it's not enclosed, so what happens then? Sure. There is paid security at Sun Valley Commons, um, and there will, there's a fence around the ice skating rink, and everything will be blocked off to where kids can't get in after hours. Um, it, does that answer the question? How high is the fence? Uh, it's just a perimeter fence. It's only, yeah, it's only four feet. I have concerns. There's boards around the ice, so there's actually it's two layers here. So you've got actually the rink itself that has the perimeter boards that are 42 inches tall. And then outside around the perimeter of the, I guess, the, the rink layout, mm -hmm. there's, another, there's also a fence up front. And we'll have strict security of not allowing anyone after hours um, on the ice. And we also, just from the management side of the of the grounds, we have people available 24 hours, seven days a week, that if there's any issue in any way, we can have someone there within five minutes. Any other questions? Uh, do we have anybody, anybody else that wants to speak tonight? Or? No, sir, not that I'm aware of. If the board has no other questions, we will do our deliberation.
Excuse me? I have a question for this. Can I ask a question? So I'm looking under your planned activities. Are you going to do like an adult night too where there's no children? I'm just looking under this. <laughs> My name's Maureen Mohal. I live at 533 Rain Tree Drive, Indian Trail. Um, for the different schedule events, yes, when we have an adult night, there will not be 18 and under allowed on the ice. We'll specifically say that it's 18 and over. We have mommy and me days planned also, or parent and I plan days planned for the preschool mm -hmm. kids while the kids are still in school up through December 20th. Okay. We do maybe a, um, maybe this is out of the realm of things, but maybe for um, special needs. Oh, sure. Um, okay. Our Special Olympians are actually going to be there doing some exhibitions for people to see that everybody and anybody can skate. We've got some sleds, they call them sledge overseas, but, but sled if skaters. You, like what I mean, um, kind of close it down for just, say, an afternoon for an hour or so. If that's needed, we'll be more than happy to do that. I don't know that that's a relevant condition, just a suggestion perhaps. I will tell you that we do host a lot of um, skaters that need the extra help and, and they, they just, are with everybody else, we, we integrate them with our regular public sessions. Thank you. That's great. I appreciate your input. That's certainly not a required okay. thing about this, what we're talking about right here. Okay. Kat, you can I know, but I was reading on here. <laughs> Sorry. Do you want to start? Question. There's some things that aren't included in the application that uh, Maureen has put her heart in this of planning. We, there's some of the events, but there's going to be a lot going on um, where they're bringing their skaters and, like she said, the mommy and me classes, and then the um, Wednesday night, the Christian skate night. So there's going to be, uh, she's already been meeting with Sun Valley High School um, and the high schoolers and getting the school involved. And they're very um, well involved in the community. So she's bringing in all the parts. So there's a lot to that. And she's been doing an amazing job um, getting all prepared for that. Ready to go through the one mm -hmm. Okay. Do I have a motion for whether the application is complete? I make a motion that, based on the staff opinion, the application is complete. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, do I have a motion that the board will whether the application is complete with all applicable requirements of the ordinance? Make another motion that the, <laughs> based on the staff opinion, that um, that it complies with all the applicable requirements of the ordinance. I'll second that motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Motion that it does not materially endanger public health or safety. I make the motion. That provisions for security 20 hours, 24 hours a day, and the fencing uh, and other measures that it doesn't not impact public safety or health. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I'm gonna. Did you want to discuss it? I mean. I do. Before I went anyways, but we, can, we certainly can discuss it. 
Right, and I get that. And I, I'm just concerned that after hours, because right. of what? I would just say because it's, it's like open, an attractive nuisance, right? Because this is it's the not concept. like you can lock the door. But like, there are retaining ponds on that site that are also a danger, and they just have little fences. Just like, really? Yeah, that's yeah. true. I mean, people can crawl over those and fall in the pond. Okay. I mean, I, I don't know how much danger difference that is between the two, well, they, but it's we'll reasonable see. reasonable due diligence. And yeah. And, so, so. and in this case, they have security cameras, right. et cetera, so. Yeah. yeah. Did you want to oppose? Mm -hmm. Did you want to oppose? Yes, I will oppose that. Okay. We have a motion that it does not substantially injure the value of adjoining or abutting properties. I'll make a motion that it does not substantially injure the value of adjoining or abutting properties. If anything, it will probably bring more people to the area and help them out. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Motion that it is in harmony with the area in which it is to be located. I'll, I'll make, make a motion that it is in harmony with the area in which it is to be located. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And last but not least, that is in general conformity with the Town of Indian Trail Comprehensive Plan and other adopted plans. I'll make the motion that it beats the general conformity of the, con the comprehensive plan as per state staff stating the goals. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Is there a motion to approve SUP 2019-0083 as submitted? I'll make a motion based on the findings of fact that the motion that the case be approved. I'll second the All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. Thank y'all. Thank you. It's going to be very fun for the town. I wish you luck. business for the board? No, sir. Do I have a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion. Sure. Do I have a second? Second. Motion All in to favor? Adjourn. Aye. Aye. Short and sweet. Okay. Thank you so much.